In this video, I'm gonna be going through the Icelandic chicken and everything you need to know. And stay tuned till the end because I'll go through their appearance and as well as their egg laying capabilities and some extra things on uh, benefits of owning these types of chickens. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So are you thinking about raising some chickens for either meat, eggs, or even as a pet? Well, these chickens might be the right one for you. These breed are also called pile chickens and they have a rich history with vital Viking blood. Despite their threatened population status, they are a strong breed. Being self-sufficient, Icelandic chickens can hold their own against the weather and predators. So let's get into the background in the history of Icelandic chickens. In Iceland, these chickens are called Islenska Landnamshainen, which means Icelandic settlement hen. This chicken originated in Icelandic settlements by Norse Vikings around the 9th century AD. They were able to adapt to the cold climates and provide sufficient meat to the settlers. Both cocks and hens were healthy and provide a reliable food source. Specifically, the hens offer excellent mothering capabilities to raise healthy chicks. In addition to that, hens raised these birds to be independent. This means they required little maintenance when it came to feeding themselves. And because of the small Nordic islands, farmers selected the best chickens for breeding to create hearty, healthy chickens. To this day, homesteaders take great care in selecting Icelandic chickens for breeding to produce the best eggs and meat. Now let's talk about the four different lines of Icelandic chickens. In total, there are four family trees, the Sigrid line, the Bell line, the Halesi line, and the Husa Toftir line. All of them are similar in temperament and size, but can differ in color, combs, and feathers. These birds are known as Icelandic land race chickens. Land race really just means that these chickens have adapted and evolved naturally. A biodiversity study conducted in 2001 found that Icelandic chickens may have originated in the Middle East. This is because of the Icelandic breed being closely related to an uncultivated breed of chickens in the Middle East, but we still do not know for sure if they originated from the Middle East. We can, however, track the primary origins of the chicken to learn learn how to keep this breed healthy and uncultivated. For many, many years, these Icelandic chickens were the only chickens in Iceland. That is until importations of commercial chickens altered the breed of the original chickens. Like I just went through, the Icelandic chicken is considered a threatened species because of crossbreeding in the early 1900s. The crossbreeding jeopardized the unique genetics of these chickens. Fortunately, in the 1970s, we created awareness to prevent them from becoming extinct. The solution is simple, keeping them from breeding with other breeds. But this creates inbreeding problems, which also risks tainting their unique genetics of land races. This means farmers and breeders have a responsibility to keep them healthy and colorful. They are still considered to be endangered, so it is essential to take excellent care of them. Now let's talk about the appearance of this bird. Because of the various breeding between Icelandic chickens and commercial chickens, there are multiple appearances for this hardy breed. This is especially true for their combs. However, let's take a look at their common physical traits. So they do have featherless legs. Unlike most other chickens, Icelandic chickens have no feathers on their legs. If there are chickens within your flock with feathered or fuzzy legs, they will need to be cold. And their legs, most of these chickens have actually yellow colored legs. Although this is the most common color, they can also have gray, green, blue, or white. They also have colored ears. Most all Icelandic chickens have white or off-white ears. And when I'm saying ears, ear lobes, sometimes with streaks of red. Most of these chickens are actually medium sized. They weigh in about two or two and a half pounds. Mature roosters tend to weigh anywhere from three to three and a half pounds. As far as their waddles go, they tend to have long waddles while hens have waddles varying in size. As far as their tail, their tails typically sit high and their feet each usually have four toes on each foot with a back toe slightly on the inside of the foot. Now, are these chickens friendly? Much like a lot of other animals, if Icelandic chickens are well socialized, they are friendly. If you mix them once they have hatched, they can grow to be extremely friendly and good animals for kids to be around. But here's a quick list of behaviors to note about these chickens. And let's start off with Icelandic roosters. Roosters do tend to fight. The personality of roosters differ, but there is a bound to be a more dominant personality among the flock. If roosters are raised together, they tend to get along with each other better. However, if the roosters become aggressive, they will need to be cold. They are also low maintenance. Because of how humans have raised these chickens, these chickens are deficient in maintenance. They forage themselves and are overall self-sufficient. Icelandics can even protect themselves if need to. These chickens are also big talkers, so be ready for these chickens to talk a lot. They are noisy and chatty, especially if they are socialized. As far as the temperament of the Icelandic chicken, it really differs, but most of them adopt a calmer temperament. Again, if they are well socialized, they are okay with people and with other animals being around. As far as hens go, their mothering capabilities, they do tend to go broody, which makes them incredibly good mothers. Now let's answer the question, what age do Icelandic chickens lay eggs? They lay eggs
eggs as early as four and a half months. This, however, depends on the season and the date of the eggs hatching. Typically, they can lay eggs year round. Now let's go through what you need to know about chicken eggs. As far as their color, they can be ivory colored, cream color, or tan. And as far as their size, they can lay medium or large eggs like any other chicken. It is essential to keep an eye out for misshapen or deformed eggs. On average, Icelandic chickens can lay about 180 eggs per year, depending on the season and hatching time. They typically lay eggs year round. Unlike some other chickens, Icelandic chickens produce lovely eggs even during the winter months. Now, are these chickens good for meat? In fact, actually, yes, they are. They are multi-purpose. They're not typically used for meat, but they are extraordinarily healthy. That being said, their meat is flavorful. In addition, their coal makes a fantastic chicken broth. Because they are medium-sized birds, their meat is plentiful. The flavor of their meat is best brought out through long, low, and moist heat. Now, let's get into the benefits of actually owning Icelandic chickens. As I went through earlier, these chickens are multi-purpose. It's hard to find any deal breakers with this breed. They are great birds all around, especially since they are self-sufficient, which leads us to the first benefit is they're great foragers. They love to roam free and they tend to snack on small bugs, especially ticks while they're wandering outside. This is great for keeping certain bugs away from the house or garden area. They also prefer to eat compost or any other organic residue. They also remain alert. Icelandic chickens have a great sixth sense when it comes to danger. They are quick and agile when it comes to escaping predators. This does not mean though that they are immune to common predators such as hawks or dogs, but they can still hold their own. They're also adaptable. No matter if you live in Arizona or Minnesota, these chickens will adapt to their environment. They do prefer colder climates, but they can still live almost anywhere. If you live in colder, harsh climates, a warm covered shelter is a must. On the other hand, if you live in a warmer climate, they need a shelter which will help them cool off. And lastly, they can fly. These chickens have excellent flying skills. They tend to perch on roofs of their coop or barn. This can be seen as a positive or negative because they can easily fly over any kind of like fencing. But, you know, at the same time, they can evade predators better. These chickens are also great starter chicks because they are so self-sufficient like I went through. They do require some care, but they will forage, like I said, and get themselves out of sticky situations and take care of their young. These chickens also live long lives. These chickens are among the healthiest, most durable chickens you can get. As a result, the average Icelandic chicken lives for about 15 years. Their consumption of organic residue and their Nordic roots make for a rather healthy breed. And lastly, these chickens are genetically unique. Because of the importation of commercial chickens to Nordic islands in the 1920s and 30s, we have some of the most genetically unique chickens. Their Nordic roots result in their durability and their commercial breeding provides us with a unique blend of colors and combs. Now let's get into some of the challenges. You know, we can't avoid getting into some of those. So the first thing is no crossbreeding. Icelandic chickens are far and few between. They are a threatened population, so crossbreeding is frowned upon. That being said, it is hard to avoid inbreeding in some cases. If you are planning to breed these birds, it might be a little difficult. These chickens are also expensive. The typical rate for purchasing an Icelandic chicken is anywhere between $25 and $50. This is a little pricey. If you're planning on buying one, you might have to make some room in your budget. They are also roamers. If you do not have the yard space to allow these chickens to roam and forage, then these might not be for you. They need a lot of space to wander and become agitated when they're in close quarters. While them being foragers is a great thing for those who have the space to let them roam, it's not good news for those with little space. Also, they can tend to have behavior problems. Just like with any chicken breed, make sure you socialize them early on. Otherwise, you might run into aggressive roosters and hens that don't get along with other birds or humans. If your roosters or hens are aggressive, they will need to be cold. Now let's talk about how to raise these chickens. If you have a large space to let these chickens roam, like I said before, you're well on your way to raising these chickens in the ideal environment. They can free range across your entire property, so space is essential. They forage all kinds of organic material, like I said, ranging from bugs to compost. You can feed them supplemental feed, especially in the winter, but they typically prefer to eat the organic residue across your property. And I say organic residue, I mean organic matter like grass clippings and stuff like that. Much like other chickens, they need a cozy coop. As I told you earlier, whether you live in colder or warmer climates, the chickens need a place to rest and escape the weather if needed. Heat lamps for coops are not necessary, but you can install them if you live somewhere with harsh conditions during winter. Building a fence is necessary to keep predators out, even though these chickens are alert, quick and agile, they are not immune to predatory attacks. Providing a secure acreage for them in addition to a secure coop will help prevent predators from getting to your flock. Besides the basic care, these chickens will do great on their own. Overall, make sure they have enough room and you'll be good to go. If you like this video, be sure to check out this one over here. That's going to do for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for listening. If you find our content interesting, if you learn something new, subscribe to the channel, share this video with your friends. With that, I hope you have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.